Be back to another day of Pro League tonight. We do have the Silver Challenger match between CJ Entis and Casey Rolster from round four. I am Valdez with me tonight. Our boat salmons, Wolf and Moonway. It's going to be a great day of Pro League yet again. Yesterday, a lot of people were thinking it was going to be a one-sided match to not end up being the case. And now we've got CJ Entis who got second place in round four. Now up against the winners of yesterday in KT Rolster. Yeah, I can see this one being very close as well, to be honest. I wouldn't I wouldn't be too surprised if it went to Game 7 again. Both these teams so evenly matched, and uh, yeah, KT looking fantastic, but you know they did stumble quite a bit against someone like Spenu, which is a little worried going up against someone a little bit better like CJ. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you there. I mean, they definitely did not look as strong as a lot of people would have expected them to be. One of the weak links, I would say, being Life, losing in a ZBZ uh, where he was favored. Kind of a problem, I feel, maybe a, maybe a hole in the lineup, if you will. Now, we were talking about this yesterday, and we had an interview saying TY is probably going to be used at some point, but not yesterday. And as it turns out, today he's going to be the starting player. Let's see if he can get some momentum against Pyong. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting matchup here. A TVT to start things off on Iron Fortress, which will be the map that we will be playing twice if we do, do go to Game 7. Uh, we were theorizing before anything was released, maybe Hero would come out for CZ Anthus. They'd love to put him first just to get that momentum going. I think it happened in round three as well. He came out first, and then I, I think he dropped the second map to maybe Rogue versus Jenner, and then Bill came back, and he, he got a lot of wins as well. Yeah, it, it's kind of a, a bit of a gamble to send out your best player like that. It makes sense that they're sending out TY first, considering the map. I do like it a lot. But they ended up as a TVT, and I, I'm not sure if either team planned that, because you need to look at both players. They're not that well experienced in TVT recently. They're not really used as to snipe TVT players. Yeah, this is not always a Terran map, so I could see why uh, both players would be surprised to hit a TVT, but they have less than 24 hours to prepare for this match. So let's see if they've got something really specific uh, really specific planned, or if they're going to just try to you know, wing it and play a macro TVT on this big map. Yeah, well, going into our maps for the day, we do have Iron Fortress to start things off between Byung and TY, as mentioned before, but then we do go into Coda as Echo. That may be one of the reasons why we do see two Terrans come out here. Yeah, well, you know what? I wouldn't mind seeing a Protoss to follow up here. If either side loses, a lot of potential there for Hero or you know Zest or someone to come out and try to clean things up on Coda or Echo. Both pretty decent maps for them. Yep, then game four going to be Terraform, where we have seen some crazy mech versus Zerg games, so that's something to keep in mind. We're going to be going to Cactus Valley, Bonnie, and then, of course, a repeat on Iron Fortress. Now, this stat screen it might be confusing to you at first. You've never seen it before. That means how many of these, how many times these teams have won or lost with this specific score in a best of seven all kill. Yeah, so you can see just in the all time records here for KT Rolster, kind of having the better overall records. And uh, getting into CJ Entis' team data, we can see the differences between the round three and round four playoffs here. When you look at this, you really wonder who the fourth player is going to be for CJ, right? Like, you got Byung, Biel, and Hero. Who's going to be that fourth player? It's obviously, probably going to be like a sniper, right? That's so funny, actually. It turns out you asked that question. <laughs> so that ends up being number three in our viewpoint here. Who will be the fourth player for CJ? Biel versus Life. Who is the best Zerg? And of course, our first one. Will the first place players of the winner's ranking get to face each other? That'd oh. be fun. And oh, very yeah. possibly as well. But Biel best Life, I'd have to say it's Biel right now. It doesn't really have to be a question, in my opinion. Especially after Life's performance yesterday, I don't really want to see him go anywhere near Biel. Yeah, I, I guess a decent viewpoint coming into this one. But especially in a ZDZ, like easy handoff there to Biel. Yeah, uh, definitely agreeing with you there, Moonblade. Thank you, Valdez. I have to agree No problem, as well. mate. I think we're, we're all in agreement on this one unanimously. Team Salmon united once again. Yeah. A common uh, happenstance in our predictions as well. So, I'm not sure if we have a coach interview today or not. We definitely heard a lot already from the KT Rollster looks, coach yesterday. Looks like we will. We got some cameras hanging over there towards the KT coach. So it'll be interesting to see what KT has to say, or yeah. at least the coach as well, coming into their next matchup against CJ. Got a little uh, talk to uh, Coach Park before uh, in the change room there, mm. and told me a little bit. He's like, yeah, we think we'll win, but it's going to be really close, which is pretty much what he said. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, no surprise there, to be honest, either. But no overbearing confidence, at least. Yeah. Um, coach Park always really likes to kind of set his limits of what he likes to say about things, but at the same time, I think he knows where his team really is, and he's very honest about it. 
Well, we're going to get into the coach interviews here. We're going to talk to Coach Park from CJ first. Set out Byung, the birthday boy, as the first player. Was it to snipe life? How did you feel when you saw T.Y. as their first player? We just wanted to avoid a Protoss player uh, when we sent out Byung. You know, only practice versus Taren. So he, they kind of feel lucky that T.Y. is the first player here. So asking the KT culture, how do you expect, or what did you feel about Byung coming out? Um, and he's like, we actually expected Byung, that's why we sent T.Y. So T.Y. is really experienced in this matchup, but he knew he'd have a good match against Byung. We wanted to get that first win, so an intelligent pick here by KT, even though from our, you know, our perspective looking at this, it seems a bit strange. T.Y.'s not really been playing in Pro League recently. Do you think he's nervous coming out today? So the good KT Rollster coach has to say about that. So basically saying Pro League is a team league. Um, so everybody feels a little bit pressured coming out. So obviously, uh, the team result relies on the players. I just want him to be comfortable. Uh, I just wanted to make sure he's comfortable before the match and try to make sure he's calmed down going into this. So comfort and uh, that kind of stuff is important, obviously. So he's saying he wanted Spenu to come up yesterday. Uh, and he was actually cheering for DRG in the final set. But after seeing the whole match, he actually feels like KT is a stronger team right now. But they don't seem as strong as they were once upon a time. Maybe uh, referring to last year. So he feels like uh, his team has a better chance tonight. KT used to have their own color, which was uh, different from other teams, but I feel like he lost his strength right now. Basically what he's saying, I think, is is that like KT used to be like, you, you can see KT and be like, wow, that's KT. You can really feel their strength and, and, and like where their strengths lie, but now it feels like they're a good team. Like they don't have that same fire, that same sort of lasting strength that you could see from a distance before. He used to have charismatic players that were very scary. They always gave us a hard time. But uh, they're actually talking about Flash here. It doesn't feel like he's the player that he once was as well. Yeah, KT coach says he's sure that he can. they, they can show their colors tonight. And a win against CJ. Color is Salmon of his blazer, which is interesting Ooh. tonight, guys. <laughs> <laughs> He's on our team. That's good to note. That yeah. means uh, they'll be winning. No contest here. <laughs> well, they've, he's already made the right choice to join Team Sam. Remember, you want to be part of Team Sam, and all you have to do is wear the gear. <laughs> well, it's very true. That was interesting uh, interviews as well, to be honest. Nothing out of the ordinary either. Just getting a feel for each other there. I think it's going to be a very close one. I think this first match there was very important. And I think we're going to see a Protoss from either side to follow things up. Yeah, yeah, you would have to expect it. It was kind of funny, too. Both coaches were like, oh, he's been practicing really well versus Taren. We wanted to see how Taren come out, so we're really fortunate, and we're going to get the lead. Uh, may just be a bit of fighting words from both these coaches here. Sure, and keep in mind that because they expected Terrans, they probably expected going to this that they would have a Protoss follow-up on the next map, so they're already thinking ahead. The second player pick is always the strongest in the entire best of seven because you know what map it's going to be, you know who you're against, and they do not know who you are. I feel like Stats would be a great pick on this map. Uh, Hero might be a great pick going to map two, but to start things off, we have this TBT Pyong with a very good record versus Terran 5 and 2. Yeah. How about that song, Wolf? How's well, the song? He's, uh, he's losing himself in something, maybe. 
Uh, it's perhaps. Mom's Spaghetti's Wolf, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, mate. You haven't you haven't been in on it yet. Um, he's one and six versus Ty, which is something big to note. Another thing to note is we don't see Beyond come out that often in Pro League against Terran in at least the last few months, or at least the last couple. Like he, he, the last player he played that was a Terran was Keen. That ain't saying too much these days. But um, beyond that, we just haven't seen much TVT from him. Ty bringing in the Uptown Funk, definitely a little bit more of an upbeat song than what we've seen from him in the last few uh, matches. He's 1-3 versus Terran in Pro League, but it seems the KT coach has a lot of faith in him going to this matchup. And obviously, they also said they were expecting Byung with a 6-1 record versus Byung. There's no doubt that TY, who just recently had a top four finish in Star League, is looking pretty confident going into yeah. this. Wouldn't be bad in that TVT. Wouldn't be bad even for TVZ if a Zerk had come out as well. But guys, it looks like we're about to get into game number one here between Byung and TY for the Silver Challenger match. We're going to go into Iron Fortress right now for game number one. Down here in the bottom right in the red, the Terran player from CJ Antis, it is Byung. <laughs> what is that, man? That's exactly <laughs> what I think of when I see him. <laughs> yep. And down uh, or up here to the top right in blue for KT Rolster, it's T.Y. He's an angry carrot. And that's a happy flower. Mm, wearing a dress. Yeah. But for some reason, you can still see the stem. <laughs> that's a see-through dress, Valdez. <laughs> I like it on my flowers. Yeah. <laughs> that's the way to be. Mm. <laughs> Now, That's what Moonglade likes. Like my sunflower is naked. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know Glad we have a good start to the cast, You guys. know what this they say about well. sunflowers, though? Is they What's always that? point towards the sun. Now, T.Y., his name is Taeyong, which <gasps> refers to the sun. Whoa. And he's wearing that pin. You can see he's got the siege tank and the sun. Siege tank points towards the sun as well. So. There's a little bit of symbolism, perhaps, We're going into this deep one. Here. It's actually, yeah. GG girls are a lot more deeper than we give them credit for. So what's the carrot about? Well, that's then. The, the carrot, carrot that's actually dancing in a disco somewhere. Okay, that might so be a little private, actually. I can, <laughs> <laughs> I can give you guys some insight <laughs> on the carrot. Um, so in Korean, uh, there's a there's a phrase called, like, dangyeonhi, which means, of course, or like, or surely, uh, if you will. Um, and what she said on the sign was he's going to win, of course, but when you use Dangun, that's the word for carrot, but it's like a shortened version of, uh, of Dangunyi. Um, so if you look at it this way, it's basically a play on, of course he's going to win. So they use I the carrot emoticon that's, that's quite popular on Kakao Talk at the same That's time. a bit of a stretch. I mean, that's not the same word, but we'll, we'll give it to him. We'll, we'll say, well, maybe. We'll settle with that, I think. <laughs> Let's not get controversial <laughs> here. We don't want to get too deep with the dancing carrots. <laughs> you, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a slightly faster gas for Byung going to this one. He's about 24 gas ahead as a result of this. And he's going to be dropping down that factory, of course, and a reactor. Skipping the Reaper is TY going into a Marine before, though. So a faster reactor here for Byung is going to give him Obviously, much faster uh, reactor Hellions, perhaps just two extra Marines. And a tech lap goes down for TY, actually, very quickly, sticking to his uh, siege tank ways. He might even try to drop an insanely fast Cloak Banshee Starport. Let's see if he... Yep, he takes a second gas already. And uh, looks like we're going to see a very fast Cloak Banshee opening from TY. Great positions for it. He's going to scout this. Mm. Yeah, I do liking this a lot. Uh, one thing to note, last time we did see TY's uh, TVT, he did go for that bio tank play. He, he kind of stayed away from the, the mech. He was up against Gumiho that time, and he did fall down to him. And I think from Byung, we are going to see that mech style eventually, unless the map dictates otherwise. He's coming mm. into reactor marines, which does often lend itself into a, a timing attack or a drop. Yeah, definitely could be. I mean, slowly getting out these Hellions, getting this SCV very, very important. T.Y. was trying to hide that there for the very late scout to see exactly what was coming out of Young, but he denies it here, going to have to rely on his Hellions from here on out. And in just about one more mule trip, he's going to have enough for gas. T.Y. is, or rather for a cloak, with the gas he already have. He starts it 
super early. It's the fastest possible cloak you can get in this matchup because he even built the starport on the tech lab, and he's going to go into that Banshee right away. So he sacrifices a lot with this. And versus a drop, obviously, uh, Byung isn't going to have a Viking out right away. Well, let's see if he can get damage on this. It's going to be about both players microing their harass while microing against it at the same time. It's a fun... TVT sort of oh, clash yeah. of openings. It is uh, one of my most fun moments in uh, especially TVT as you mentioned uh, just when there's two fights essentially going on at the same time and you really get to see the multitasking of both players. It's going to be interesting for Byung as well uh, to see how many scans he saves. Is he going to be ready for this Cloak Banshee to come in? Yeah, and it's, it's about when that Cloak Banshee gets there as well. I mean, as you can see, that drop coming across the map could do a lot of damage before anything kind of is there to defend against it. We're going to see one Banshee come out, but is it going to intercept this drop, or is it going to go straight to the main? Well, he might want to turn it around. Let's see. Okay, he decides. Oh, uh, yep, turns it around. And Hellion's coming up here as well. They are tight-walled off. Oh, this Banshee oh. is going to have to micro really well to defend this. Can, of course, Micro against the Marines quite well. They do not have Stim. There's but the elevator into the main, though. Yeah. Yeah, this could do actually a lot of damage here. There's simply not enough units. If the Bio can get on top of that Banshee and shut it down now, a lot of SCVs are going to go down. More Marines popping out. He's not using those Hellions to the fullest of their potential either, actually, on either the Marines or the SCVs. And this actually will eventually oh. be repelled. I feel like this was very poorly controlled by Byung. Yeah, he, this is a complete disaster. He could have done way more with that. those two Hellions. He could have done so much more. He could have done anything instead of having you know, them shoot into simply one Hellion the entire time. Yeah, and now two Banshees are out, one heading towards the main of Byung. He's going to keep the uh, the harass going, but only two Marines left over. They're not going to find too much damage in this main base. And the Viking is, is here as well. It's not at home. He needs another one, and it's not ready. He doesn't have a single turret. His eBay isn't ready. This counter Banshee should do a lot more damage than Byung's been able to accomplish. Well, yeah. that thought, actually, that one Viking could actually do some work. If it stayed around a little bit longer and dealt with that Banshee, maybe the drop could do something else. Turret being uh, built here. And the scan is getting close, maybe five more energy, but this Banshee is going to get a lot of kills here in the main before he gets any detection at all. So much more damage than Byung could have ever even dreamed to accomplish with what we saw from his attack earlier. It's oh, just yeah. way too much damage. This is actually out of control. Ten SCVs for that, and a scan. That is ridiculous. Certainly turn things around in a big way. I'm not sure why Byung did not use his Hellions to either target the Marines or target the SCVs. He just simply didn't control them at all. Mm, considering how bunched up those Marines were as well at the back of the mineral line, he could have really dealt with them very quickly and started working on the SCVs. And a lot of those SCVs are actually very damaged as well. So, yeah, big, big micro mistake there. Maybe he could make amends with this uh, Hellion drop. Yeah, it's kind of an awkward position for him. I mean, you guys can look at the worker lead right now for TY, 31 to 18. The CC is not too far behind for TY as well. It's not even like Byung has that big of an advantage there either. So as you said, Ming Lady's going to have to find some critical damage with these Hellions or just somehow try to defend for a long time. Well, here we go. Drop heading towards that main base, a siege tank set up there, and a lot of Marines in place. But still, if he chose to focus fire those SCVs, maybe he can find some damage. Yeah, he's gonna have to. He's gonna swing around the north side here, just out of range of that siege tank. He already eats a huge shot. Ooh, does find a good angle here eventually, though. Ten kills. That's quite a lot for four Hellions. Remember, a lot of these guys were very low from the earlier drop coming in. So already twelve kills being taken down here by Byung. Three of them getting out of there as well. So that's kind of really evens up the damage here. Young coming back in a big way in terms of harassment. Still a lead for TY, and he's going to do his own counter drop now. Three Hellions in here, not all at full health either. But there's nothing here, and let's see how much damage. This should be a lot of damage. Young is not even reacting with his SCVs. Oh my god. Ooh. Oh, look at that pull the lineup. Ooh, one more shot can do a lot of damage here. Trying to repair, but oh they're all bunched it up. Couple more hits. That could have been even worse, but eight kills and the Banshee still denying mining here despite the turret. Even just going to kill this drop oh. mule. <laughs> so much money lost there. Uh, so much money lost. It's like such big trades, but TY certainly getting ahead because of it. It's constant harassment here. This is like some old school Wings of Liberty TBT, just constant harass with Banshees and drops. Like cl uh, close by uh, air spawns a Metalopolis almost type game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bringing back those memories. Uh, looks like Ty posturing up for an attack here. He's I think he feels like he's done enough damage. Yeah, it seems that way. He's gonna eat that shot so his units don't have to. And there isn't too much to defend here. Nothing that's really gonna stop tanks. Yeah, that wood of mine. The second wood of mine certainly isn't even gonna be that helpful at stopping the tanks. Let's see if he runs into that one too. 
Oh. Just trying to bait it with these Hellion. He's just going to let the medevac tank it and then go in. PDD is going to win the air battle, but he yeah. can't control the ground. He's got two Ravens, in fact, just in case. He's going to use it for detection and the PDDs, but they've been cleaned up. And so many more tanks here for TY. Oh, very smartly just landing there. His Vikings as well. Going to force the natural up. going to put Young in such a bad place. He needs to be careful about getting into this range of the siege tank, though. It's on the high ground. Ooh. Ooh. Vegas. Raven here does get very ahead of himself, gets killed before that turret can get placed. And this is just, again, too good of a trade for TY over and over again. Yeah, I think he's almost checkmated. Once he gets these tanks up the ramp on top of these factories, if he can siege up and hold it, he's essentially won the game. Yeah. Way too much of a commitment to Vikings and air for Byung, which isn't that helpful if you don't have anything to support them. He had very few tanks behind this. Oh, here you go. Pulling the SCVs, going for one launch, just effort. And a huge amount of SCVs going down. That's going to be it. GG, TY taking game number one. And that's a scary thing, man. TY. You know, he can deal with any sort of Protoss as well. He's got fantastic TVP and TVZ, like, I, and I feel like those are the ones we're gonna, he's going to run into next. Yeah. I wouldn't want to send a Terran against him anyways, actually, actually, after what we just saw from him in that game. Beyond with just some simple control mistakes with his harass, had he done about even damage with those Hellions, I think the potential was absolutely there. Had he done that, I feel like we'd have seen a totally different game, but TY's follow-up drop did a lot of damage. And then he had two Ravens and a bunch of Vikings versus a tank push with Marines. And the Marines just targeted the PDD down. PDD doesn't work against Goss Rifle Fire. And uh, then he just basically only had one tank, which was constantly focused. The next tank comes down, he focuses it again, and then there's, yeah. there's nothing for the Vikings to spot for. That's right. He, he really got far behind. Just from that constant harassment, it did so much SCV damage as well. Yeah. Like, constant in a state of like trying to rebuild his economy at the same time getting units out. And now we look at the map, and we wonder to ourselves, what could they possibly bring out that isn't Hero? It is going to be well, on Coda. Yeah, I think it's got to be Hero at this point. Um, we, we were contemplating what was going to be that number four slot for CJ. So I suppose it is possible they send out another Terran. Uh, Maybe Sky High if he's in a good place. But.